Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to look over three easy ways of creating character animations. Okay, let's get started. The first way of creating animations is through an animated sprite 2D. If, for example, I select the animated sprite 2D as a node for a character body 2D, I can go to the animation tab and under sprite frames, simply create new sprite frames. Now, upon clicking again on these sprite frames, you will see that I get a new interface in which I can define some animations. Now from this point on, how I create the animation mostly depends on the actual sprites that I have. So for example, if I have, let's say, a bunch of individual sprites and each of these individual sprites representing a frame of the animation, then I can simply select all of these sprites and drag and drop them into my animation. Now what you might notice or what can generally happen is that the frames that we added to this animation view could be in the wrong order. So let's say for the sake of the example that maybe we wanted this dino to have a bobbing up and down animation. But uh, as you can see here, it's the highest and here's a bit lower and here is the lowest and then here's high again. Well, maybe we could take this second frame and simply move it to wherever we want it to be. So if I want, I can click on it and drag it towards the right. Also, I could be using the interface. So as you can see here, I can select this frame and click move left and it moves the frame to the left or even click move right. Okay, but now that we have our animation, let's see how it works in practice. I'm going to go to my character body 2D and add a new script. Now for the script, I'm simply going to use the basic movement and maybe just make it a little slower. So let's just say that the speed is 150 and the jump velocity, I'll leave it to 300. It's perfectly fine. And if I want to run it now, we have a big surprise because our animation is not actually working. Now, why is it not working? Well, it's not working because we did not actually start it. So how do we start the animation? Well, we can simply write func ready. And in our ready function, we can take a reference to our animation. So let's just drag and drop while holding control to get this reference. And I'm going to say animated sprite 2D dot play. And here we can say which animation the animated sprite 2D should play. Now, if I only select the animation that we have, the default one, it's going to play default. So if I press F5 now, you see that our character bounces around. Now, of course, if I move from left to right, it's the same animation and maybe it's still a bit too fast. So I'm going to put it to 100. So yeah, maybe now it's more visible that it is the same animation. But how do we swap between these animations? How do we get to a running animations, for example? Well, for that, I'm going to go back to my animated sprite 2D. And if I click on the animation tab, okay, maybe let's click it again. Yeah, I can go here and add a new animation. Now this animation, I can name anything, but I'm going to simply call it run. And for this running animation, maybe let's see which frames we should pick. I think it's from five to nine. Yeah, this looks reasonable. So we have this running animation. And if we want to maybe check this animation out individually, let's just, instead of default, play the run animation. You see now that our character is running. Okay, but this animation was kind of slow. How do we make it faster? Well, again, we can go to this animated sprite 2D. And if we want, we can change the speed in multiple ways. One way would be to simply change the number of frames per second. Maybe we want 10 frames per second instead of five. This would make basically the animation to run twice as fast. You see, now it really looks like our dino is running. Or what we can do is also to go to our animated sprite 2D and let's just put it to five frames per second again, and we can change the frame duration. So maybe we want one frame to be only 0.5 seconds. Now, of course, this is going to be only the first frame, but yeah, we could do the same to the other frames. Now, as you can see, this is a bit more cumbersome, but it allows for more flexibility because we can change the duration of each frame individually. So now if I press F5, you see that again, it has the same fast speed without actually modifying the frames per second that the animation has. And 
as I said, we can individually change something. So maybe we want this frame to stay like two seconds. And if I run right now, you'll see that it kind of stays on the right foot. It, it kind of looks like it's dancing. <laughs> Now, before we actually start swapping between these animations, I want to also show you that we can play this animation not through code, but we can simply click on this autoplay on load. So whenever this animation is going to be loaded, it's basically going to run the same thing. So just start the animation automatically. If I press F5, you see that the animation works despite me having removed this part of the code. Okay, but now knowing this, and knowing that we have a play function for each specific animation, it's going to be really simple to swap between these. Why? Well, of course, when we get some kind of input, so when we get this direction, we update the velocity and the dinosaur starts moving. Now, if I want to play the running animation while the dinosaur is moving, I am going to simply get here and say animated sprite to play, And in here, let's just say run. And of course, if I am not moving, then I'm simply going to copy this line. And instead of run, I'm going to say default. And now one small tweak that I also want to do is to flip the sprite whenever our character moves towards the left or towards the right. So I'm just going to say animated sprite to the dot flip age. And I'm going to make this to be equal to what? Well, it's going to be true whenever the direction is smaller than zero. So if direction is smaller than zero and otherwise else I want it to be false. So if I save right now, you'll see that my character first of all starts in the idle animation. But if I start moving, you see that it starts running and also flips the sprite to run to the left or to the right. Now for the second way in which we can animate, we are not going to use individual sprites, but instead we are going to use a sprite sheet. So if I go under character body 2D2, I can add here another animated sprite 2D. And here under animation, under sprite frames, I'm gonna click on empty and click new sprite frames. And under these new sprite frames, for example, if I wanted to go to sheets here, you could think that, well, it's the same thing. We just drag and drop them. But as you can see, if I drag and drop, <laughs> my character gets uh, a lot of copies of himself. So we do not want that. What we want instead is to collect these images from the sprite sheet. And we can do that through this button, add frames from sprite sheet. After we clicked on that, we have to select the actual sprite sheet. So let's go to sheets here and let's select this yellow one. And after I open it, you see that I have this uh, cute interface in which I have some table that is overlaying my character. Now, what I have to do is to simply say how many frames do I have horizontally and how many frames do I have vertically. Now, for vertical frames, it's pretty simple. We have only one vertical frame, so it's just one image per row. So I'm simply going to say one. And now for horizontal frames, I'm going to spare you some counting and just say that there are 44 of these. But as you can see now, I have delimited all my frames here. Maybe if uh, your frames are separated by some pixels, you could increase this separation if you want, or maybe they are offsetted to the right a bit. So you can also increase this a little as well. Now, of course, our image is perfectly fine this way. And we can select again the idle animation. And how do we do that? Well, we can select by clicking on each of these squares. So zero, one, two, and three. And we add these frames. And again, after we have these frames, we can move them in any way. And we can basically do everything in the same way as we did before. We could make a script. We add the basic movement to it. Under the script here, if we actually move, we are going to say animated sprite to the... Okay, maybe let's just get a reference of it. We can say animated sprite to d.play run. And if we're not moving, we can say animated sprite to d.play default. And of course, we can also update the horizontal flip of the animation. Now to create the run animation in the same way, I'm gonna click on the add animation button here. I'm gonna rename this to run. And if now I open the add frames from sprite sheet, you will see that there is a bit of a problem 
And the problem is that, again, I have to zoom in, and again, my slices are set to 4 and 4, and this is a bit cumbersome, to be honest. If I have to make like 10 animations every time I have to make this setup, I looked it up and apparently there is an issue for this, so this is eventually going to get fixed so that it remembers the previous settings we had, but up until then we have to live with what we have, so I'm just gonna say 24 again and 1, and let's just pick the animations for running, so I'm just gonna click this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, we add the 6 frames, and now we also have the run animation. If I save, I can press F5, and you can see that both dinosaurs move. Okay, the other one moves quite fast, maybe because I forgot to actually update the speed and jump velocity. But yeah, whenever I'm moving, the dinosaur is also moving. And whenever I'm staying, the dinosaur is in this idle mode. Now, the final way of creating animations is not by using an animated sprite 2D, but rather we can use a simple sprite 2D. But how are we going to animate this? Well, we are going to do it with an animation player. So I'm just going to select here, animation player. Okay, now what we have to do is go to our scene and in our sprite 2D, we can attach again a sprite sheet texture. So let's just say that I want this green dinosaur and we attached the whole sprite sheet to the texture of the sprite 2D. Now, of course, since this is going to be an animation, we have to specify how many horizontal frames it has and how many vertical frames it has, just as we did previously in the second way of animating with the animation sprite 2D. So horizontally, we have 24, and vertically, we have only one. Now, there is another property which helps us quite a lot called frame, and with this, we can basically move through the animation. So if I click on this arrow, you will see that our character moves and basically does all the frames in the animation. So what I can do right now is use an animation player in order to change this property of our sprite 2D. So if I go to the animation player, I can click animation and click new. Now here I can call this whatever I want, but let's just call it idle or default as we called it before, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to go more in depth over animation players in another video, but essentially what this can do is add a keyframe to any property a node can have. So if I go right now to my sprite 2D, I can add a keyframe, you see this key icon, to my frame property. So if I click on this one, I can click create, and you see that the first frame has been added to my animation. Now the idle animation only had four frames, so what I would have to do right now is add four more keyframes with the correct frame selected. But you'll see that if I click on the keyframe again, the animation player is smart enough to know that the frame property should advance. So I'm just gonna click again on the key and see it's frame number one now. If I click again, it's frame number two. And if I click again, it's frame number three. Now, of course, just as previously, we can use this animation player in order to tweak how our animation is going to behave. So for example, I do not want the animation to be one second, I want it to be 0.4, and you can see that this gray area now got shortened to these 0.4 seconds. I can also select this animation to be loopable, and if I want to preview it, I can click on play, and you can see that the animation is playing just fine. And in a similar fashion, I also have this autoplay button for when I want the animation to start right as it gets loaded. Now, in the same way, what I can do is create an animation for running. So if I click on animation, I can click new and let's just call this run. And for the running animation, I can again go to the frame that I'm interested in. So frame number four, click on the key and simply add this frame to my animation track here. But as you can see, the frame has been added to the middle of the track, but it's still no issue because we can drag and drop it and put it at the beginning. Now, if you want to be more precise with this movement, you can always disable this snapping or maybe make it lower. And now with the snapping disabled, you can see that I can much more smoothly move this sprite along the animation period. Now I'm gonna turn the snap back on. And finally, maybe you would like to not see only 0.1 seconds, but maybe see more. And you can do that by simply moving this slider, so you can see that we zoom in a bit 
or we could even hold control and scroll up and down to zoom into the level of detail we want. Okay, but now what I can do is simply go to the next keyframe, which was number five, and click on the key, and then click on the key again for six, for seven, for eight, and for nine. And you see that my dinosaur is now running. Now, how do I actually start these animations? Well, again, if I just create a new script, maybe this time I'm just going to copy the previous script that I had. So let's just make it this way and let's paste everything. And instead of referencing an animated sprite 2D, I'm going to reference an animation player. So let's just drag and drop it here. And also let's reference the sprite 2D so that we can flip it horizontally. And what we can do is in similar fashion, just call the play function of our animation player. So instead of animated sprite to the dot play, I can say animation player dot play run, and it's simply going to play run. And here I can say animation player dot play, and it was not default this time. I think I chose idle. So we can play the idle animation. And for the sprite, again, I can just select the sprite to D and flip this horizontally. And now if I press F5, our dinosaur is moving whenever we move and is being idle whenever we don't do anything. I noticed that there is a slight problem with the animation. The dinosaur seems to be keeping its leg up, but let's see, maybe we did something wrong. And yeah, it seems like we set the animation to be too long. We set it to one second. So instead of that, we have only six frames. So let's just say 0 0.6. And now if I run again, the dinosaur seems to be working perfectly fine. Now, remember that all these settings that we change from the interface can also be changed from code. So, so as you saw previously, we changed the speed of the animation. We can also do the same here. So for example, on ready, punk ready. And if I press F5, <laughs> you'll see that our dinosaur maybe drank too much coffee, but yeah, I think you get the idea. So. Check out the properties of the animation player, check out the properties of the animated sprite 2D, because you can change quite a lot of things quite easily. Now, if you clicked on this video because programming and animations are your cup of tea, then you will love today's sponsor Brilliant. With Brilliant, you can engage into visually stimulating lessons that teach you how to think like a programmer, and most importantly, it provides a highly effective learning process as it focuses on hands-on exercises. For example, you can start by learning conditional statements and loops, and then work your way up to learning actual programming languages like Python, which, by the way, is very similar to GDScript. One of the best features of Brilliant is its ability to fit into your daily routine. With its bite-sized content, even by investing only a few minutes each day, you will develop habits that will help you grow, sustain, and solidify your skills over time. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash cashewalldew, or you can scan this QR code for 20% off their premium annual subscription. Hope the video has been helpful and see you in the next one.